Hello everybody, welcome to Nature Talks. Today we're going to talk to Mr. Ashwini Khurana and we're going to learn about rainwater harvesting. So, uh, nice to have you on our show today. Namaskar, thanks. Uh, so you're doing uh, so much great work with uh, composting, with uh, waste management, uh, and especially your rainwater harvesting project. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of this. And uh, right now, since uh, Delhi is running out of the groundwater, uh, the groundwater table is depleting. So uh, this is a very important topic for everybody in Delhi. And uh, yeah, now it's the raining season is going to start. So I think people should take some ideas and take some inspiration and start harvesting rainwater at their personal level or colony level, wherever they can. So, uh, yeah, uh, you can tell us like, uh, what made you start this? How did you get this idea to start saving the rainwater? I was in my mid twenties when I met this uh, gentleman who later uh, I got to know uh, was appreciated all over the world for the art out of waste he created, Nick Chanji of the Chandigarh Rock Garden Frame. And uh, he was very famous uh, for not only putting to use pieces of uh, waste into pieces of art. And uh, he helped me plant trees in this very place that I call home come office. And uh, we looked at planting trees in a very arid place which this was because uh, this place was a brick kiln for a period of 20 plus years when I acquired and how we turned it into a piece of paradise planting, harvesting, composting and uh, most importantly living in an eco-responsible way with great respect for austerity of the world's resources and without compromise on our comforts. Actually, it's a myth that when you live in an eco-responsible way, you compromise your luxuries and comforts. To my experience, you actually enhance them. And that's what Nick Chanji taught me. So, uh, in, in your uh, rainwater harvesting project, uh, Maybe you can tell us some of the numbers, like how much water is able to be saved because of this, and uh, like what kind of methods you've used to save the rainwater over here, and some from outside your property also, which is being saved. Right, it's not getting drained away in the storm drains. It's going. You're recharging the groundwater table. Yes. Uh, interesting. We we started this uh, initiative. When some seven, eight years ago, my property is eight acres, my sister's abutting two and a half acres, and my sister declared a state of emergency that the bore well in her property uh, in the months of May and June used to pretty much uh, break supplies. You run the bore well, 20 minutes later, there's no supply. So you shut it, you give it rest. An hour or two hours later, you run it, 15 minutes it runs, breaks. So she said she's going to sell this property because this is guaranteed to become arid and a desert in the next few years. And before the whole world knows and declares it as desert, I got to exit and sell it at whatever price I can. My reaction was uh, that in the interim, my bore well was deeper and I would supply water to her property. but a promise that we'll work on water harvesting and and let's see what happens. So we started to enhance the water uh, harvesting initiatives, not only in our own home, uh, which we call a farmhouse, uh, but also the entire colony roadsides. And uh, what was done was uh, a zero runoff policy, which means a zero drop of water that falls on your land is going to run off your land. Run-in is permitted and encouraged, but run-off is not permissible. Today, after having done various kinds of water harvestings, I can tell you last five years, not a moment does the bore well stop or break in supplies, no matter which month, May, June, any time, there's water. 
So while the whole world is screaming that the water tables are going down, some are proud that our water table has stopped going down. I am exhilarated to state that ours has come up. Yeah, that's really good news. Yes. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we can go have a look at some of uh, the systems. That I'd be delighted to, yeah. to demonstrate to you the various ways that water harvesting has been done by us at the community level on Green Avenue Road. That's the area right. that we live in and my home. So we are standing in this little uh, piece of forest and uh, the rainwater that falls in this forest and in the abutting colony roads all flows inside into these two water harvesting bore wells. These, these are like 15 to 20 feet deep. The rainwater goes into this it has a honeycomb wall. A honeycomb wall is brickwork without complete plastering. So what happens is if uh, when the water fills up, it bleeds into the abutting soil and uh, to the root structure of the entire forest. Depending upon the amount of rain, whether it's 50 feet from the top down or more, very difficult to tell. But the whole land underneath gets moist for the next many months. Yeah. So it's going to take nourishment out of this rainwater for the next many months. And you can see there was a rain few days ago. The water is still stagnating at the bottom. It's uh, recharging the groundwater table also. Yes, uh, yes. See Delhi, actually the entire country, I'd say every thousand square yards has an abandoned dry bore well from where we used to take out water once upon a time but water tables fell so those ran dry now those bore wells are a great opportunity to pay back to mother earth by channelizing the rainwater in that area uh, through proper drainage systems this water would go into the earth and that's exactly what we're doing most of the harvestings we're doing is abandoned dry bore wells there's a particular one which is an open bore well 120 feet deep, 11 feet dire, millions of liters of water goes into that well on a single good rainy day. We'll have a look at that. So this is a, a 30 feet deep water harvesting well. We couldn't go deeper because there's rock underneath. But we dissipate water into the soil. Yeah, there's so many colonies. Uh, majority of Delhi is not harvesting the rainwater. It's it just goes in the storm drains and into the river and none of it is going back into the ground. The that's, whole, that's a sad tragedy of our times. This entire colony roadside used to be under two feet of water whenever it rained. And uh, now we have this underground rainwater drainage system. You can see the grills all along the road and the road level is higher than the sides. So the rainwater runs off to the side and down the whole system, it goes into an open well where harvesting is happening. So there are grills you can see. Uh, they capture the rainwater from the top. Underneath, they are all piped for almost uh, 350 meters. Along the road, entire water comes into this pipeline and into this open well. See, this well is, is a tunnel into the earth. And about four times in a year, the water comes right to the top. Can you see the tunnel inside the earth? You can't see the end. But if you concentrate, what you'll see is the soil underneath is wet. Why it's wet is because uh, the last rains. And uh, if you come back after a big rain, there have been times when it's full to the brim and it's raining. 
and humongous amounts of water is coming in like uh, the sound is like a turbine is running you know these massive 10 inch pipes two of them uh, throwing water back into the earth and what happens is uh, when the rain stops you come two hours later the water level has dropped by 40 feet so that's how thirsty the soil underneath is yeah. and you can see it very importantly you know to be a rainwater harvester you cannot afford to be selfish if i'm selfish that uh, i will only do rainwater harvesting if the water table in my vicinity for my personal bore well will become great it may not if i put water here greater kailash 25 kilometers down uh, may get a rainwater recharge yeah. but somebody 20 kilometers or 10 kilometers different side when he harvests my water table might be coming up so if we are the me my myself types we will not happily work on our rainwater we got to think magnanimous this earth is mine this whole universe is mine i put water here and forget somebody's good will come to me my good will go to somebody it does not matter we got to do it yes. every 500 to 1000 square yard plot of delhi has a dry bore well if the whole city as an emergency woke up and just did water harvesting of their bowls i can promise you the city water tables will come up not simply stop going down they will come up like they have happened in this place and every time it rains i actually see like a stream of water flowing into the earth it's mm. such a joy just watching and i'm always out in the rain when it's pouring in my shots <laughs> Thank you so much for showing us around and sharing all this great information with us. I'm sure uh, the viewers have learned a lot. Uh, there's so many great ideas and I'm sure like if everybody just does a little bit, we can make a great big difference for all of us. It'll have a positive effect. Thanks very much. All I want um, to see around us is a responsible bunch of people who make this planet a beautiful place that we leave behind for our next generations. Yes. If we have clean, green, serene habits and the surroundings that we create are themed around this, what a beautiful world we'll leave behind. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you. You can see the water going, going into this line. You can see the bottom of the line. You can hear the noise and the water.